Harris Paige Salmon, a member of PRT 486 Senior Seminar in Sport. For this documentary, I will be discussing the ethical issue of hazing in high school sport. What exactly is hazing? There is no one way to define hazing, but there are various ways to describe what co constitutes hazing. For example, hazing is typically an initiation process for an individual to be accepted into a group. Hazing activities are strenuous, humiliating, degrading, stressful, and even dangerous for the one involved. Hazing can be divided into three categories that differ in the degree of intensity and danger. Subtle hazing is the first and the least intense group. Name calling, isolation, and periods of silence are types of hazing within this group. Harassment hazing is the next level and includes more serious actions such as verbal abuse and threats along with performing personal services for older members, much like being a slave. Violent or bodily harm hazing is the most dangerous category. Activities in this group include forced alcohol and or drug consumption, nudity, indecent behaviors, and even kidnapping and acts of abduction. Hazing is a growing problem within the realm of high school athletics. The statistics are troubling. For example, 1.5 million high school students are hazed each year and over 800,000 of those students are involved in athletics. 79% of NCAA athletes reported being hazed initially in high school. These numbers are reportedly low due to the fact that most students who are hazed do not report the issue and are therefore left out of the statistical data. Many students that are subject to hazing experience many negative consequences as a result. These cases lead to social withdrawal, depression, decreased motivation, as well as relational issues for most victims. Most students reported feeling angry, depressed, guilty, sad, miserable, and even embarrassed. Hazing incidents are surfacing all over the country. Here you will see three recent examples of hazing, all in different states and among different sports teams. Heritage High School was on the local news for its act of hazing. In this case, three members of the baseball team were assaulted, stripped, and duct taped to playground equipment at a local elementary school by their older teammates. The link listed below this example will direct you to the news report for more information. In the other examples, the victims were subjected to indecent acts and were held against their will. Schools, faculty, staff, students, and parents need to be aware of hazing and its effects while actively taking preventative measures. A study from Alfred University noted some of the following steps as effective means to prevent hazing. A no hazing agreement should be signed by students and parents. Also, an increased awareness and continuing education of hazing is vital. Individuals should no longer view hazing as a tradition. Investigations and prosecutions should also be routinely conducted and enforced in order to curb the practice of hazing. The numbers surrounding high school hazing will be reduced when students feel safe in their community and well protected in order to report these issues without the fear of judgment or ridicule. Community standards should be reevaluated and in some cases reinvented. Leaders should be cultivated from these standards and student morale will rise. Adolescence is a pivotal time in a young adult's life. This age group is vulnerable and easily susceptible to the adverse effects of hazing, especially within the context of high school sports. An anti-hazing approach will create a safer, healthier, and stronger environment for these students to grow and succeed. When the prevention steps are implemented and adhered to, our schools will note a decrease in the amount of hazing among athletes. I hope you now have a better understanding of hazing and the impact it has on high school sport. Thank you very much for your time.